The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, seeing is believing. You can see for yourself that Luckies are made to taste better. Simply remove the paper from a Lucky Strike by carefully tearing down the seam from end to end and lift out that cylinder of fresh, clean, fine tobacco. Now, in exactly the same way, remove the tobacco from any other cigarette. Compare it with a perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco taken from the Lucky. See how round and firm and fully packed the Lucky is with long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And notice how free the Lucky is of annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. This is your proof. Luckies are made to taste better, to taste fresh and clean and smooth. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And Luckies taste better. So enjoy the fresh, clean taste of fine tobacco. Yes, be happy. Go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go lucky. Go lucky. Strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, in just 30 minutes from now, Jack Benny will do his fourth television show of the season on the CBS network. But right now, we'd like to take you to, out to Jack's house. He's just finishing dressing. There, I'm almost through. Get me my shirt, Rochester. Yes, sir. Do you want that solid gold cup link you got from Mr. Ronald Coleman last Christmas? Wait a minute, Rochester. Mr. Coleman only gave me one cuff link? He didn't give it to you. He swung at you and it fell out of his shirt. <laughs> Oh, yes. If Benita hadn't grabbed them, I'd have had them both. <laughs> Rochester, get my other cufflinks out of the bureau. Yes, sir. What drawer do you keep them in, boss? Well, you ought to know. You put them away most of the time. Yeah, but you keep putting all kinds of junk in your dresser. Well, let's try this top drawer. Nope. There's just socks in here, a couple of handkerchiefs, and what's this? Let me see that. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I forgot to return it when I left New York. It's the key to my room at the Acme Plaza. <laughs> I don't know why they gave me a key. My room didn't have a door on it. <laughs> no wonder they call it New York's friendliest hotel. <laughs> now, see if you can find those cufflinks. Okay, I'll try this drawer here. No, nothing but shirts here. Nothing in this drawer but underwear. Hey, maybe I threw those cufflinks in with my underwear. I'll flip the flap and see. <laughs> well, hurry up and find them. Miss Livingston's waiting in the den for me. She's going to drive me to the studio for my TV show. Oh, they weren't in there. I'll try the bottom drawer. Oh, Mary, will you answer the phone, please? Yes, Jack. Hello? Well, I was expecting a shrimp boat and I got the dream boat. Is that you, Phil? This ain't no phone call from a stranger. <laughs> hey, by the way, Livy, Alice and me had a couple of people over at the house Friday night and we called you, but you were out. I know. Jack took me to the movies. Jackson took you to the movies? Uh-huh. Passes Dutch or do we have an item for Ripley? <laughs> No, no, Phil, he really took me. Do you want to talk to Jack? Yeah, yeah. Well, here he comes now. Who is it, Mary? Remley Straight Man. <laughs> oh, I'll talk to him. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. How you feeling? Oh, I'm all right, Phil. I guess I'm a little nervous about my television show tonight. Well, why don't you do what I do to calm down? What's that? I have two of my musicians go around with me, and every time I feel a little nervous, one of them gives me a drink of bourbon. Oh, What's the other guy for? He's there to make me nervous. <laughs> well, 
Oh, stop. Oh, what did you call for? Hey, look, Jackson, I've been thinking of making some changes in my band. Well, good, good. <laughs> hey, you know, it's good, good. You don't even know what I want to do. Phil, any change you make in your orchestra, even if it's only their socks and shirts, will be an improvement. <laughs> You want to know something, Phil? Your musicians could play five numbers and still stump the experts on what's my line. <laughs> now what... <laughs> now what is it you want to do with your band? Well, uh, for the past few years, Bagby, my piano player, has been on the left side of my orchestra, uh -huh. and I've been thinking of moving him over to the right side. Why? Because that's where the piano is. <laughs> well, try it, Phil. It may not sound good, but it'll look better. <laughs> Anything else, Phil? No, so long, Jackson. So long. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hey, Livy tells me you loosened up and uh, treated her to the movies last night. Well, what's so strange about that? If that don't bring Eisenhower home, nothing will. <laughs> all right, all right. Goodbye. 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 You know, Mary, I can't understand it. I took you to the movies. Everybody's making a big thing out of it. I can't understand it either. We were walking down the street. You found a $5 bill, and you certainly can do what you want with it. <laughs> of course. Everybody has... Uh, excuse me, Mr. Billy. What is it, Rochester? Mr. Wilson's at the back door, and he wants to see you. Don Wilson at the back door? Excuse me a minute, Mary. What can that... What, what can he want at the back door? Funny of all places, Don, to come in from... Don! Oh, uh, hello, Jack. For heaven's sake, why... <laughs> why did you come to the back door? Well, Jack, all the way over here, I've even walked through the alleys. I don't want people to see me. But why? Because today we do another television show, and I just can't help feeling ashamed and upset about the mistake I made on your last one. But, Don, that was six weeks ago. I know, but how could I ever have said be lucky, go happy, instead of be happy, go lucky? It was so humiliating. Look, Don. I felt so ashamed, I went home and sobbed for hours. I know, Don, but... I just couldn't stop the tears. What an embarrassing thing to happen to a man of my dignity. Look, Don. Don. Little fat crowd that cried. <laughs> I got one of the biggest laughs tonight. Now, stop worrying about it, Don. Don, I'm sure you won't make that mistake again. But I can't get over making that mistake in English. Every foreign transcription I made, I was perfect. Foreign transcription? Did you make transcriptions in foreign languages? Why, certainly, Jack. Luckies are sold all over the world, and I have to study every language there is. Gee, I didn't know that. L let me hear you say, be happy-go-lucky in Spanish. In Spanish? Yeah. Sure. Ser alegre and da feliz. Gee, how about Italian? Essere beato andare propizio. Oh, what do you know? Hey, here's one that'll stick you down. Let me hear you say it in Chinese. Wan tunga mui gay, sing ching jong sing, ji yo tonga yi. That means be happy go lucky? Yes. Wan tunga mui gay, ye ching sing, mangula ka. Wan tunga mong kai, go ye fu yang today. That means no loose ends. <laughs> well, you had some loose ends that time, brother. <laughs> anyway, Don, believe me, I'll be very happy if you just get the commercial right in English. Well, that's the hardest one, but I'll try. So long, Jack. Okay, so long, Don. <laughs> See, I wonder, I wonder how the song I wrote would sound in Chinese. When you say, I pangi mugai, then I'll cheng yi tao mang. Hey, not bad. I'll have to talk to my arranger, Melon Fu. <laughs> Say, Jack, what?
What a Don Juan. Oh, he's still worried about the mistake. Oh, hello, uh, Mr. Benny. Dennis, I didn't know you were here. I just came over to wish you luck on your TV show. Oh, thanks, kid. Are you going to have any guest stars? Yes, yes, I'm going to have Burns and Allen. Say, that ought to be funny. He's my favorite comedian. George Burns? Oh, Fred Allen. <laughs> Look, Dennis, I'm talking about Gracie Allen, not Fred, Gracie Allen. That's George Burns' wife. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I just thought of something. What? I wish you'd get married. You do? Why? I'd like to hit you with an old shoe. <laughs> Dennis, leave me alone, will you? Leave me alone! Jack, Jack, don't upset yourself. Why don't you ignore him? Yeah, ignore me. <laughs> Dennis, let me ask you something. What's come over you lately? Why, what do you mean? Well, for a couple of years up to last June, you were acting pretty fresh. Since then, you've been very nice and polite. Just lately, you started an acting smart alecky. What happened? I've got two shows again. <laughs> I know, but you still got a job to do on my show. Let me hear the song you're going to sing, will you? Okay, Bob, okay. Oh. He was a peaceful man, if you know what I mean The cops picked up the pieces after Clancy left the scene He never looked for trouble, that's a fact you can assume But nevertheless, when trouble would press, Clancy lowered the boom Oh, that Clancy, oh, that Clancy Whenever they got his Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom Boom, 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 boom O'Leary was a fighting man, they all knew he was tough he strutted round the neighborhood to shooting off his gun. He picked a fight with Clancy, then and there he sealed his doom. Before you could shout, Oh, Larry, look out! Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, that Clancy! Oh, that Clancy! Whenever they got to the Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Now Clancy left the barber shop with tonic on his hair. He walked into the pool room and he met O'Reilly there. O'Reilly said, for goodness sake, now do I smell perfume? Before you could stack your cue in the rack, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, that Clancy, oh, that Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Boom, 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 boom. The neighbors all turned out for Kate O'Grady's wedding night. McDougal said, let's have some fun. I, I, I think I'll start a fight. He wrecked the hall, then kissed the bride and pulverized the groom. Then quick as a wink before you could think, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, that Clancy. Oh, that Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Oh, that Clancy. Oh, that Clancy. Whenever they got to the Irish up, Clancy lowered the boom. Boom, boom, boom. It was the greatest sight you ever did see when Clancy lowered the boom there. Dennis? Dennis, that song is still wonderful, and there's nothing I would like more than to hear you sing another one, but I'm afraid I'll have to say goodbye. Why are you leaving? No, you are. Goodbye. <laughs> Jack, you didn't have to push him. Mary, sometimes that kid drives me nuts. But look, Jack, don't pay any attention to him. Look at how can I help it? Last Monday, I was awakened out of a sound sleep by the telephone. When I answered it, it was Dennis. He wanted to know what time it was. I said, it's four o'clock in the morning. He said, well, this is no time to call anybody and hung up. <laughs> You tell me to, not to pay any attention to him. Well, Jack, forget about it. You always get yourself all worked up. I know, but I got a TV show to do tonight. He has to come in and make me nervous. Look, Jack, he's gone now, so why don't you go to your room and take a nap? I'll wake you up when you have to go to the studio. Okay, Mary. What'll you do? Oh, I'll stay here in the library and read a book. Okay. But don't, don't let me sleep too long, will you? Oh, I won't. I won't. Go ahead, Jack. <clears throat> Gee, Jack is certainly on edge today. Well, maybe the nap will do him good. Let's see, what book can I read? Oh, gosh, Jack has a lot of them. Let's see. Oh, here's one. How to Make Money Raising Soybeans. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, here's another one. How to Make Money Selling Homemade Blinces. <laughs> here's another one. 
How to make money trapping lizards. Hmm. What's this? How to spend money and enjoy it. I'll bet that little gem never saw the light of day. Oh, here's one I've never seen before. My career as a hospital nurse. I think I'll read this. My career as a hospital nurse, chapter one. I am one of the legion of women who have been called angels of mercy. I am a nurse. My name is Aura, Aura Meissen. <laughs> I worked at the admittance desk of the city hospital. And, like all nurses, I had a boyfriend, a young intern named Dr. Harris. My story begins about a year ago. It was a quiet day in the hospital. Dr. Jones wanted in maternity. Dr. Jones wanted in maternity. Hello, Aura. Hello, Dr. Harris. Would you do me a favor? Please send my stethoscope out and have it fixed. Well, certainly. Uh, what's wrong with it? I don't know. I keep hearing Guy Lombardo. <laughs> I'll take care of it for you, Doctor. Thank you. And by the way, Aura, would you mind if we postponed our date for the movies until tomorrow? No, not at all, but, but why? Well, I'm terribly tired. I was up all night in the emergency ward treating a bunch of drunks. Really? Yes. Oh, why must people drink like that? <laughs> It is a shame. Dr. Jones wanted in maternity. Dr. Jones report to maternity immediately. Uh, by the way, Dr. Harris, how is your patient in room 312? He died. Oh. Well, how about your patient in 419? He died. And what about the case you had in Ward 5? Yep. <laughs> Well, you'll have to excuse me now, or I'm late. For what? I'm taking a course in embalming. <laughs> Dr. Jones, hurry to maternity. Dr. Jones, please hurry. Dr. Jones, please. <laughs> Dr. Jones, you're a slow poke. <laughs> left, and even though he hadn't told me, I knew the real reason he hadn't taken me to the movies. He was spending his evenings doing research with a left-handed guitar player. <laughs> Later that afternoon, I was still at the admittance desk when something happened that was to change the course of my whole life. He walked in. Excuse me, nurse. Yes, sir? My family doctor sent me here for a consultation with your famous specialist, Dr. Heinrich von Schmierkase. Uh, very well, sir. I'll have to fill out this admittance card. Uh, your name? My name is James. Uh, what's your last name? James. My name is James James. Uh, where were you born? Pango Pango. <laughs> where do you live now? Walla Walla. What disease do you have? Berry, berry. <laughs> and what is your occupation? I'm an announcer on Double or Nothing. <laughs> I see. Now, how tall are you? Five foot 11. Your weight? 158. Uh, color of eyes? Oh, they're blue, aren't they? Bluer than the thumb of an Eskimo hitchhiker. <laughs> uh, now, have you been to any other specialists? I've been to hundreds of them, but they never help me. I feel terrible. Well, what are your symptoms? I hear music and there's no one there. <laughs> I smell blossoms and the trees are bare. And don't tell me I'm in love. I'm sick as a dog. 
Oh. Now, just a moment while I fill this out. Dr. Smith is wanted in the operating room. Dr. Mason is wanted in the consultation room. Dr. Ross is wanted in the kennel. Fido knows best what. <laughs> Uh, very well, Mr. James. You may see Dr. Von Schmierkase now, right through that door. Thank you. And you consider yourself fortunate. Dr. Von Schmierkase is the world's greatest specialist in diagnostician. I know, I know. I'll go in and see him. Gee, what a big office. Well, that must be Dr. Von Schmierkase over there in the corner. Must be getting to ro operate. He's putting on rubber gloves. Excuse me, I'm Mr. James, and I have Barry Barry. Please tell me, please. Please, what should I do? I don't know. <laughs> Will you have to operate? I don't know. <laughs> Will I live? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know anything. What kind of a doctor are you? I ain't no doctor. Then why are you wearing those rubber gloves? I don't want to leave fingerprints. I'm robbing the joint. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm sorry. Where can I find Dr. Von Schmierkase? I don't know. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll go find him myself. Ah, here's his office. Dr. Heinrich Von Schmierkase. Excuse me, Dr. Von Schmierkase. I'm Mr. James. Ah! Du liebe, wie geht's, Landsmann? Was ist los? Was ist los? Well, doctor, I... Uh... Don't worry. First, please, the examination. Stick out, please, the tongue. There. Now close, please, the eye. There. Good. Now lift, please, the left foot off the floor and hold it up. Okay. Fine. Now lift the right foot off the floor, too. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Ach, just as I taught, Digispell. <laughs> Doctor. I'm afraid we will have to operate. Operate? What are you going to take out? Oh, don't worry. We'll think of something. <laughs> we will operate early tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Why so early? Incision before dawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, Dr. Von Schmierkase, you may not be a sharpetist, but you sure get corny. <laughs> now, don't worry, Mr. James. We uh, got... You rang for me, doctor? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Have Dr. Harris prepared this man for surgery, and I will want you to assist me in the operation. Oh, thank you, doctor. As I prepared the patient for surgery, I noticed that he had his will tattooed on his chest. <laughs> I was amazed when I read it. He left everything to himself. <laughs> We were practically ready for the operation when the patient began to get restless. Nurse, nurse, where's Dr. Von Schmierkase? He'll be here in just a minute. Dr. Harris and I will get you ready for him. Oh, nurse, uh, hand me the anesthetic. Anesthetic. Cotton. Cotton. Sponge. Sponge. Alcohol. Alcohol. Chaser. Chaser. <laughs> What's going on here? Quiet. Here comes Dr. Von Schmierkase. Hi ho, hi ho, it's <laughs> off to work I go. Well, 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 how's my little patient? I'm nervous, doctor. Oh, don't worry. Now I'll start. First nurse, hand me, please, the iodine. I'll have to paint his stomach. What are you painting on my stomach? A smile. This operation is being televised. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. If you knew what a lousy doctor I was, you wouldn't be laughing. <laughs> now we will the operation commence. Nurse, hold the ether to his nose. Well, I'm sorry, we have no ether. Well, tighten his necktie. <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh. That's enough. He's starting to look like Eddie Cantor. <laughs> now I will operate. Now all you interns, watch carefully so you will learn something. And please, no applause till the nurse holds up the card. <laughs> well, now I take the scalpel and make the first incision. Mm, there. Now before I make the second incision, I would like to say a few words on behalf of my sponsor. <laughs> my sponsor is the author and publisher of a book called How to Avoid Paying Income Tax. The price of this book is $200. For this money, we not only include a copy of the book, but we also send you fruit every visiting day. <laughs> now back to the operation. I will make the second incision. There we are. For heaven's sake, doctor, I've never seen such a tremendous incision. Yeah, and it's got me worried. Why? Where will we ever find a Band-Aid that long? <laughs> 
Well, I'll worry about that later. Dr. Smith, come to the office and bring your bag. Dr. McDermott, come to the office and bring your bag. Dr. Wagner, come to the office and bring your bag. Train leaving on track five. Azusa and Goop. Come on down. Even though all the doctors had gone to the great festival, the operation was a success. And I sat by the patient till he recovered consciousness. When he did, he turned to me tenderly and said, For heaven's sake, Mary, you let me sleep so long, I'll be late for my television show. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I, I got so absorbed in this book. Well, what am I going to do? Here we are in Beverly Hills. My TV program goes on in just two minutes. Well, don't worry, Jack. Come on, we'll make it. Let's go. Well, here we are at CBS. It's amazing what you can do with sound effects, isn't it? Come on, Mary, let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the very best Easter gift of all is the support you give through Easter seals to children who need your help. These seals provide medical care, nursery centers, and many other things that are needed. So give and give generously to the Easter seal agency in your community, or send your contribution to Crippled Children, care of your local post office. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. But first... Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And Luckies are made to taste better. You can prove this to yourself. Simply remove the paper from a Lucky Strike by carefully tearing down the seam from end to end and lift out the cylinder of fine, mild tobacco. Now, in the same way, remove the tobacco from any other cigarette. Compare it with a perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco taken from the Lucky. See how round and firm and fully packed the Lucky is with long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. See how free the Lucky is of excessive air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry. There is your proof that Luckies are made to taste better, to taste fresh and clean and smooth. So to enjoy the fresh, clean taste of fine tobacco, be happy, go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, in about one minute from now, I will be doing my fourth television show of this season. I'm happy to say that on tonight's TV program, I'm having as my guests George Burns and Gracie Allen. In the profession, this is what we call a reciprocal agreement. You see, they come on my program this week, and all next month, I do their laundry. <laughs> but I'll be seeing you. Good night, folks. The program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night, presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. The program is to be heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Transcribed, this is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>